Hey there, everybody. Cindy Hartzell and our Unbridled Freedom private group. <sighs> I want to start out by welcoming all of our new members and thank you so much for saying yes to a deep dive into building a stronger, more meaningful relationship with your horse. Not everybody's up for that. A lot of women just want to get on and ride and feel safe and know how to get their horse to do what they ask them to do. And that's okay. But this group is about building that relationship that is built on trust and connection and communication a deeper understanding of the horse as a holistic being, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. And what I mean by spiritual is that essence of who they are that drew you to pick them over all the other horses out there because your essence was connected and drawn to theirs. So thank you all for joining. Today is going to be a really um, important discussion. It's visualization and mindfulness. And we do mindfulness, uh, no, scratch that. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. We do visualizations constantly throughout the day, often, um, not even aware that it's going on. The mindfulness is something that takes practice, but first you have to become aware of what does mindfulness mean and making the conscious decision to start paying attention to what's going through your mind. The average human, and there's lots of debates out there, but the average hurt human, I think it's agreed upon, the average human, how many times can I say average human, <laughs> thinks like 60,000 thoughts a day. That's a 24 hour period. And we are even having thoughts running through our mind. Our mind is cluttered even while we sleep. So today we're going to talk about how can we choose to consciously create visualizations and mindfulness in a way that's going to enhance our relationship and our connection with our horses and everything we do with them from grooming, ground working, which in my program and my philosophy is the foundation of all activities with your horse. Everything begins on the ground. And if you can't achieve it on the ground, please don't think you'll get it done in the saddle. You will for a while, but if it starts to fall apart on the saddle, how do you fix that? You go back to the ground kind of went off the wrong direction. So we are going to talk about visualization and mindfulness. And so the beginning of that, which I really am striving to do at the beginning of every live, and I forget because I must not be as mindful as I'd like to be. I'd like to just take a couple moments to put our feet on the ground, settle down into our chair, close your eyes if you want, and take some nice deep belly breaths. When I say belly breath, if you put your hands two inches below your belly button and you breathe in, you should feel your belly button expand and then 
let it all out. And I will actually make that exaggerated noise because that is forcing all of that air out of my lower lung lobes. That's where the CO2 gets trapped. The stale oxygen gets trapped. And when we aren't fully exhaling, we can't fully inhale. And we, we don't fully inhale, we're not giving our brain, our muscles, our tissues, our organs, our blood, the adequate oxygen that it needs for us to be able to function at optimal level. So let's take a moment and take four deep belly breaths. You might feel lightheaded. Hopefully you can feel yourself relaxing more into your body, into your chair, into the room, becoming more present. By creating a habit of taking four deep breaths regularly throughout your day, beginning with the moment you open your eyes, your body will begin to crave that. Your body craves it for many reasons. One, you're fully oxygenating yourself. Two, your brain can think clearly. Three, you're dipping, you are taking yourself out of the sympathetic autonomic nervous system into the parasympathetic, which is calming, releasing endorphins, releasing serotonin. In the sympathetic nervous system, we're releasing adrenaline and cortisol. We're fight or flight. We're taking short, shallow breaths. We're depriving ourselves of the oxygen. You're going to hear me say this hopefully in every live I do because it's that important. And not only is it important for you, but it's important for your horse. Because if you can take the time to reset and refocus, you're giving your horse the opportunity to do the same. As their leader, you're saying, hey, let's be present, let's be grounded together. So please, I encourage you to make that a habit. You will love it. Your body will love it and your horse will thank you for it. So let's talk about visualization before we go into mindfulness. Visualization is a powerful tool that so many successful people have learned to use on a regular basis. Speakers, horsemen, horsewomen, performers of any kind, athletes, leaders, Like I said, we all do visualization, but are we consciously doing it or is it just happening? So I'm gonna run you through a little exercise um, to show you how we visualize and we may not even be aware of it. So for a moment, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and just settle back in your chair and follow my words. Are you ready? Here we go. This morning, I woke up to the sound of a panting dog who needed to go out. 
So I staggered out of bed and I opened my bedroom door that leads to the outside and off they went. And my cat was still in bed purring. I could hear his motor from the door and I really wanted to crawl back in bed. But instead, I got up, got on my jacket because it's a little chilly this time of the year, opened the door, let my two dogs back in, walked down the hallway, grabbed my coffee, went into the living room, looked out the beautiful picture, big picture windows at the panoramic view I have of the mountains. And I drank my coffee and I woke up and then I grabbed my clothes and I did my morning chores, went out, fed my horses, came back in, prepared the day for the veterinary practice and went out and worked with three of my horses in my round pen. And here I am now doing this live. So did you notice that while I was describing to you what I did today, your mind's eye, which is that spot, that spot right in the middle of your forehead, right between the middle of your eyes, oh, boom. Were you visualizing me going through that routine? Even though you may not have been to my house, you may not know what my dogs look like. You may have seen the pictures on my home because I share a lot on Facebook, but even then you still don't know exactly what it looks like or what horses I worked with. But did you notice how you visualized every single step? That's the power of visualization without even trying. Another example is when you are going to a party or you're going to meet up with somebody to have coffee and have a conversation or you need to have a conversation with your significant other. Do you notice or know that you are running that through your mind and visualizing it before it ever happens? Again, most likely completely unaware. So what I would like to share with you guys is the power of purposeful visualization. Uh, let's go to another example, but we're going to bring it to our horses. How many of you have had a day with your horses where it was amazing. You guys were on fire. It was like you were so connected at the soul and nothing went wrong. It was beautiful and you laughed on cloud nine. And so the next time you go to the barn, you are so anxious and excited that it's going to be that way again. You're going to have another one of those days. And you see it all the way there. Or a lot of the women that I work with who are having challenges with their horses, they're frustrated, they're anxious, they're confused, both they and their horses. Or they want to learn how to do something and they don't know how to do it. Or their horse has developed a behavior that is not desirable could even be unsafe and they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to stop it. And so as they get in their car and they head to the barn or they get ready to go outside, if they're fortunate enough to have their horses in their backyard and they're visualizing this thing happening. And I have heard so many times my clients say, as we're walking out to the horse, God, I hope she's not going to be her cranky self today. I hope she's going to be a good girl. Or I hope he's not going to be an idiot because I just, I'm so frustrated. So you cannot say something without seeing it in your mind's eye. So a minute for let's pause for a moment and have you think about 
what you're going to do today, depending on when you're watching this video, what are you going to do today? What did you do last night? What are you going to make for dinner? What are you going to do with your horse today? When you think about it, do you notice that you visualize it? I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. That's how powerful visualization is. So how do successful athletes, leaders, speakers, performers, horsewomen, coaches, how do we use that to our advantage? We don't visualize what has happened in the past. Because that's gone. That's in the rear view mirror. And if you notice the rear view mirror, everything in the rear view mirror is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But when you look out the windshield, everything is wide open. Endless possibilities. So, stop looking in the rear view mirror when you're visualizing. Let's look at what your desired outcome is. And then play that out in your mind, in your visualization, using the power of your mind to see that play out in detail. So for example, I'm working with this beautiful little horse who has been given a tremendous amount of bad in, uh, information. She was actually trained by a, by a trainer whose approach is to fight with the horse. We won't even get into that. However, I have been working with her for two months now. And before I go to work with her on my way to the ranch that she's at, where sometimes when I'm having my cup of coffee in my living room, remember my living room has the big picture windows that look at the panoramic view of the Sierra Mountains. Can you see it? I will run through my mind's eye using the power of my mind, visualizing how my time is going to go with her. I pull up, it's a beautiful day, even if it's windy, rainy, whatever, it's a good day. I grab my halter and a couple cookies and I head out to the pasture and I call her name and she looks up at me and she's like, oh, and she may nicker and she comes and greets me as I'm walking to greet her. I halter her up, I walk her to my car I throw the lead rope over her neck and I groom her and I saddle her and we walk out to the whatever open area we're at and I play with her on the ground just saying hey how you doing this morning how you doing today this is how I'm doing are we connected are we communicating do you feel good in your body how about your mind are you emotionally with me am I emotionally mentally and physically with you and can we have that heart and soul connection during this time i am visualizing this in my mind's eye our warm-up on the ground grows great i climb up in the saddle and off we go and we have a fabulous ride not perfect fabulous and we have challenges that she's working through and they come up and i rise to meet her and guide her through them and then at the end of the ride, we go for our little stroll. She gets to graze a little grass. We go back to my car. I unsaddle her. She stands politely for all of that. And then I take her back to her pasture. I give her a big hug. I ask her, was it as good for you as it was for me? Because that's what matters. And that's the visualization I have before I go work with her. I don't even work with them. I call it play with them before I dance with them. I do that with every horse. 
I do that with every client that are that I'm coaching through their own personal growth so that they can get rid of their triggers and their blocks so that they can rise to the occasion of being the horsewoman they want to be for their horses. So that's the visualization. Now the mindfulness, like I said earlier, the average person has 60,000 or more thoughts racing through their mind every 24 hours. And how many of those are you aware of? It creates chaos in your mind. It creates confusion and distraction and fatigue, irritation. It puts you in that sympathetic nervous system. Your, your autonomic nervous system is wacky because it's got all these mindless thoughts running through your mind, creating adrenaline, agitation, fear, confusion, stress, blah, blah, blah. So mindfulness is something that takes practice, like visualization, like breathing, like learning to understand your horse from the inside out. Anything worthwhile, you guys, takes the commitment to say, yes, I am all in. I want this so much that I am dedicated and devoted and committed to whatever it takes to make this happen. That's the decision I made in 2000 to become the best horsewoman I could ever be for horses. And I will spend my entire life mastering that. Hmm. I probably won't really master it completely. I don't think anybody does, but I will become more and more masterful every year. So how do we must become more masterful? I'm learning to stop saying mastering and saying masterful because I realize that once you've mastered it, you might as well quit because there's no such thing as becoming a master at it goes deeper and deeper and deeper but anyway mindfulness how do we get better at that how do we move from 60,000 many most unconscious thoughts to quieting our mind catching these random thoughts and going back to that vertical core, which means your head space, your heart space, and your power center two inches below your belly button and back towards your spine are all in alignment. And you are grounded in the present moment like horses are. Excuse me. Horses are masterful at mindfulness because they live in the present moment. So how do we become masterful? at mindfulness. We become the observer of our thoughts. And when we catch ourselves driving down the road and blah, 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 all the mind chatter, we catch it, we marvel at it, we go, wow, that's fascinating. I didn't even know I was doing that. And then we take those four deep belly breaths that bring us back into the present moment and ground us. You cannot have your mind running wild with chatter when you are focused on filling your breath, uh, filling, taking those deep breaths, filling that power space below your belly button, those lower lung lobes, and then fully exhaling it. You cannot be focused on your breathing and have your mind running wild. It's impossible. I challenge you to practice it and try it and notice. Does your mind keep going blah, 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 blah while you're focused on your breath? So those are the first steps. First step is awareness, catching yourself with all the blah, 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 blah. She said, he said, then we did this and then he did that or I got to go get this and I got to do that and what if this happens and why did he do that? All that, catch it, awareness. Then take four deep belly breaths. Then 
Focus on silence within the mind and see how long you can go. And when you first start this, you're going to go, oh, this is ridiculous. Or, you know, you might get frustrated with yourself, whatever. That's chatter. <laughs> That's mindfulness of clutter and chaos and garbage. Let it go. Breathe back into your center and see how long you can go between thoughts. And the more that you practice it, the longer this time goes between your thoughts. And if you can learn to do this with your horse, it's calming your nervous system and therefore will help calm their nervous system. And if you practice your visualization prior to stepping into the dirt to go play with your horse on what you'd like that day to look like. And you don't have to have a big plan. The visualization can be that you're just grounded, present, breathing, connected, having mindfulness instead of a mind full of chaos and just being with your horse and observing how does your horse receive you when you're in that place. That's a pretty powerful experience. So practicing visualization and mindfulness, and they go hand in hand, they really do. Practicing that for lots of things, you know, you're, you're, going to meet up with a friend and you're notice if you catch yourself running through your mind what it's going to be like when you see them and is that how you want it to go or you're going to have a conversation a not so comfortable conversation with somebody and notice are you running the negative through your mind because Everything around us that we have created or others have created began with a thought. That's how powerful thoughts are. The fact that you have a horse became a thought. It, was, it started as a thought, as a visualization of what it would look like to have a horse in your life. So when we can make the decision to be aware of how we are seeing things in our mind's eye. Are we running the past through our mind, which is creating that in the future, or are we writing a new story? An athlete uh, let's say a three day eventer on a horse, a dressage rider, a hunter jumper, me training a young colt, gentling a wild mustang. We run that through our minds successfully the way we want it to happen over and over and over again before we actually step out to have it happen. Because when we're running it through our mind, our body is, 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 feeling like we are doing it in the present moment. That's why movies are so powerful and books are so powerful because our mind doesn't know past, present, and future. In our mind, it thinks it's happening right now. That's why we get so drawn into movies because our mind thinks we're in it and we're living it. So if you ride the ride the way you want it to happen, before you ever step into the saddle, put your foot in the stirrup and step up and sit in the saddle. You are hedging your bets in the right direction because your mind has already ridden the ride. Your body already knows what it feels like. Some may think this is bullshit. Some may think this is new age, wave, funky stuff. It's not. It is a scientifically proven fact. There are athletes out there that practice this 
They play the game before the game. They ride the ride before the ride. And so when they get out there to do it, they already know in their mind, they're mindful of how it's going to go because they've visualized it. So everybody, I hope that you find value in this. I'd love for you to comment below. What are your thoughts? What are your questions? How are you using this? And I would love to challenge you with practicing this visualization and mindfulness, the awareness of it, before you go engage with your horses. Do it for a week. And then share with the group how that worked for you. How do you use visualization and mindfulness in your life and with your horses? If you're already aware of this, share with us. This is a group for all of us to grow and learn together. Share with us, how are you using it in your life? And if this is new to you, I encourage you to play with it. And please share with us. I would love to hear from everybody watching this video. And I get to see how many people actually watch this video. I don't see who watches, but I get to see how many watch. So I would like to challenge all of you who are watching this video from beginning to end, which our attention span is narrow, so I'm hoping that I am captivating enough that you watch it to the end but share with us how you are either using visualization and mindfulness in your life and how you're going to begin using it and then come back and share with us how it went so that is the end of our mindful our visualization visualization and mindfulness video Next time we meet together, we are going to be working on the fifth of our eight videos in this Riding with Confidence series. And the next one is Gradual Exposure and Controlled Challenges. It's about how do we help ourselves and our horses through situations that create fear and anxiety in either ourselves or our horses. There's a technique, there's a way to do it, and I'm gonna share that in the next live. Until then, everybody, thank you so much for being a part of this group. Thank you for interacting, because that's how we get to know each other and grow together. Remember, if you have a question about something, there's a good chance that somebody else in this group does too. So step up and speak out. And I will see you guys in our next live video.